It's winter and I'm freezing. How do polar animals deal with this every day? Let's find out together in this episode all about Arctic and Antarctic adaptations. Can I get a hot chocolate? It's no surprise that humans like me have difficulty with sub-freezing temperatures. These temperatures are a problem for all living things because all living things are made of mostly water. When water freezes, it actually becomes less dense and expands, which is great news if you want to go ice skating on your neighborhood pond, but not such great news for cells. In the polar regions, temperatures are so low that hypothermia can quickly set in, and ice itself can form inside the body, forming crystals, causing frostbite, yikes. So to survive an extremely cold climate, animals need to keep heat from leaving their bodies. The best way to prevent heat loss is to get out of town and go someplace warmer. That sounds really nice right about now. When food and shelter is really hard to find, migration is an animal behavior where all the animals in a population move to a warmer climate to avoid the worst of winter. Animals migrate over land, across water, and through the air. Caribou live in places like Northern Canada and the state of Alaska. For most of the winter, this herd of caribou lives here, further south, right on the border between Canada and Alaska, where there's more food and the weather is less harsh. Humpback whales also spend the summer in cool waters near places like Alaska. All summer, they build up the energy they'll need for the trip they're about to take. When the water starts to cool, the humpbacks swim south to warmer waters near tropical islands. As great as that sounds, not everyone has the option to leave. Let's take a look at some of the amazing ways that animals have adapted to their frigid environment, preventing the loss of that precious body heat. In cold environments, all that cold air is taking heat away from your body faster than your body can keep you warm. Polar animals' fur acts like a jacket, keeping the cold air from touching their skin and trapping a warm layer of body heat around them. Let's take a closer look at the polar bear's winter coat. Close to their body is fluffy white fur, which traps dry, warm air next to the skin. Next to that is their outer coat, which is made up of hollow, transparent hair called guard hairs. Beneath all that thick fur, polar bears have jet black skin, which helps them absorb more heat from the sun. What is really interesting is that these guard hairs cause the polar bears to be almost invisible in infrared vision. Infrared radiation is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can't see. Warm bodies emit this radiation, which is what infrared cameras can pick up. Polar bear guard hairs absorb and hang on to this radiation more effectively than almost any animal. Because nearly all of the infrared red radiation is absorbed, it won't show up on infrared cameras. Arctic foxes and caribou also have these hollow insulating hairs. Is a great fur coat enough to battle the cold? Most polar animals like beluga whales, elephant seals, ringed seals, and walruses take it a step further and have a layer of blubber for added insulation. Let's take a closer look at how blubber works. Blubber is a specialized layer of fat that lives under the skin and is biochemically and anatomically adapted to be an excellent thermal insulator. Blubber can be up to 93% lipid with very little water content. Kind of like this fat here. I have created a blubber glove that is going to help us test the insulating power of fat. So let's measure the current temperature of my hand first. 76.2 degrees before going into this ice water. Now I'm going to submerge my hand in this ice water for 30 seconds. Thirty seconds, too long. Okay, let's quickly measure. It's so warm. Let's quickly measure the temperature of my hand now. Fifty-one point four degrees. That's cold. Let's try again using my other hand with the blubber glove. All right, let's wait the thirty seconds. Let's quickly. Get the temperature reading on my hand now. 77.3 degrees warmer than my other hand before it went into the ice water. That's pretty impressive. Because lipids have low thermal conductivity, it doesn't transfer heat as well as other tissues like skin or muscle. So it makes 
an excellent insulator. Animals like polar bears can have over four inches of fat surrounding them to keep them warm in frigid waters. How much shortening do you think we would have to buy to make like an entire suit? The mammals aren't the only ones who have heat trapping adaptations. Penguins have several strategies. Take a look at these penguin feet. How do these fur and featherless footsies stay warm enough? They keep the blood in their feet just barely above freezing, while the rest of their tissues are nice and warm. Antarctic penguins are able to keep their feet safe by using something called counter current heat exchange. At the top of each foot, a penguin's blood vessels wrap around each other, so different temperatures of blood are flowing in opposite directions. This allows heat to transfer from the warm blood entering the feet to the cold blood traveling back to the central body. By the time the blood gets down to the feet with all the oxygen for the cells, most of the heat has already been carried back up to keep those important muscles and organs nice and warm. If you're still here liking this video, Hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. But what about when the penguin is swimming in that ocean water that's below freezing? They have waterproof feathers that keep their bodies dry and insulated. Penguins have a gland close to the base of their tail known as the oil gland or the preen gland. Penguins use their beaks to get the oil from the oil gland and spread it among their feathers. How does this work? We are going to try to waterproof one of these paper towels, just like a penguin would waterproof its feathers. I have some petroleum jelly that is similar to the oily substance that penguins use. Let's fully coat this paper towel and see if it can keep this tissue paper fully dry when it's underneath. Okay, I think I did a pretty good job. We are going to test both paper towels out just to see the difference. We're gonna put this tissue paper underneath. So it's under that one. We'll also put the same thing under this one. I have a squirt bottle here that's full of water that we're just gonna spray each down and then check it out. All right, you can see the water traveled through the paper towel and got onto our tissue paper. I don't know if you can see this, but all of the water is actually beating up on the surface. It's dry, that's pretty impressive. Now oil is a hydrophobic substance, which means it repels water, it doesn't mix. The oil is non-polar, so water basically just rejects it. Another strategy that some animals use to escape the coldest months is hibernation. Hibernation is where animals become dormant or inactive. Why is this a useful strategy? If you're an animal who mainly eats vegetation or insects, you're going to have a really hard time finding those food sources once everything is frozen. Let's take a look at the Arctic ground squirrel to see how hibernation works. To survive the harshest conditions, they will burrow beneath the permafrost and slip into a state of suspended animation, its body temperature plummeting to a frigid 27 degrees Fahrenheit. As hibernation kicks in, Animals' heart rates usually slow to about 1-3% to of their original speed. Breathing also declines dramatically. Hibernating animals appear to stay alive by having just enough oxygen and blood circulating through their bodies. Small mammals such as tundra voles, lemmings, ermine, and shrews can't hibernate. Instead, they use the snow to their advantage, insulating their tunnels and nests with it. Arctic foxes, squirrels, and even polar bears also curl up in holes or tunnels in the snow to stay warm. In summer, the ermine is brown with a whitish throat, chest, and belly. In colder climates, the winter coat is white, except for the black tail tip. In moderately cold climates, the fur becomes only partially white. They aren't the only ones. Arctic fox, Arctic hare, and ptarmigan are all camouflaged according to the season changing from winter white to summer brown and back again each year. Have you ever tried walking in really high snow? It's exhausting and can be impossible for small animals unless you have the right footwear, like the snowshoe hare. To keep from sinking into the deep snow, the hare has very wide hind feet that act as snowshoes. They redistribute weight so that the hare remains above the snow. Polar bears, mountain lions, and lynx also have very wide feet. These animals are champs when it comes to dealing with the cold. 
The next time you're freezing, just think, it could be worse. You could be a single emperor penguin with no one to huddle with who's run out of oil. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next. Uh -huh.